despite all the time they had spent together these last three years, despite all of the things they had been through, the miracles that they had seen, the wonders performed, the messages that he had spoken, despite it all, they had failed to grasp the significance of the incarnation. And they had not been able to wrap their minds around the concept of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three in one, one in three. Now the truth is, we can't fault them. Because the truth of the matter is, we have a hard time understanding the Incarnation. And we still struggle to get our minds wrapped around the concept of the Trinity. My Father, this was Jesus' novel term for God. In the Old Testament, God is seldom, if ever, referred to as Father. John, however, remembers Jesus using this designation for God, my Father, more than Matthew, more than Mark, and more than Luke. He does not tell us that Jesus referred to God as my Elohim. The Hebrew term that spoke of an awesome, creating, all-knowing in purpose, omnipotent in power, omnipresence in person God. John does not remember Jesus ever saying, My Jehovah, the God of the promise, the God of the covenant, wise, loving, but strict in his requirements and demanding of his children. He does not remember Jesus referring to God as my Adonai, my Lord, the God of command, sovereign ruler, owner of all that must be obeyed. No, John remembers Jesus referring to God as my Father, a God of comfort, a God of compassion. A God who has a house and a God who has a family and a God who invites others to be adopted into his family. John will use the phrase, my father, on the mouth of Jesus 156 times in his brief gospel. Jesus had shown them the Father, but they had not grasped that. They couldn't get their mind around it. Jesus had demonstrated to them that he was God in the flesh. That when you saw the Son, you saw the Father. But they could not wrap their minds around that understanding of the Trinity. This makes me think of two things. First, what is it that we have failed to understand? What is it that we have not grasped that God wants us to see? If you could do this, would you? Would you enclose yourself in a small compartment and it's just you and no one else and God. Now what is it that God wants you to understand that you haven't quite gotten hold of yet? You see, we sometimes fail to grasp the very obvious things that God would teach us. 
They had the revelation of God the Father in the flesh before them, God the Son, day after day, and they missed it. Maybe it was because they were expecting something more dramatic, something more tangible, something that they could do. Maybe they were expecting God to send them on a pilgrimage to a city like Mecca. Maybe they were expecting God to send them to take a ritualistic bath in the holy waters of a river like the Ganges. Maybe they expected God to demand of them that they go to a city like Rome and they climb up the staircase called Pilate Stairs on their knees until they are bloody, reciting one ritualistic prayer after another all the way to the top like Martin Luther did. Maybe that was what they were expecting. But that's not what Jesus told them. The second thing this makes me think of. Faith does not require us to understand completely. As a matter of fact, the very concept of faith suggests there are things we don't understand. But despite our lack of understanding, we are willing to make a commitment. We are willing to say, I believe, and to step out on that belief. As a matter of fact, I would suggest to you that until you are willing to step out on faith with an incomplete understanding of the things of God, you have never exercised faith.